Gordon, you, you came here like me by plane, so didn't you get more radiation in, in this plane than you would ever get from any nuclear power plant? <laughs> well, depends a lot on the nuclear power plant. I mean, if I had been near an exploding nuclear power plant like Chernobyl or the one at Fukushima, obviously I'd get a far more radiation from that. But uh, in a plane, it's true. When you fly in a plane, you go closer to the uh, stratosphere and you get more cosmic radiation, which is very similar to X-rays, but more powerful. Uh, these are penetrating rays that go right through your body and damage the cells in your body. Uh, most of that damage is repairable and the body doesn't uh, really bother by it, but some of it could in fact cause uh, serious diseases including cancer. Yes, it's true. There is natural background radiation, but when you land and get off the plane, you know, that exposure is over and there's no residue left in your body. There's nothing left in your body which is going to continue to bother you. The thing about radioactivity from a nuclear reactor is several things. First of all, you have a lot of radioactive materials coming at you all at once and they enter your body and become part of your body. They actually get incorporated by your digestive system into different cells of your body. Mm. And you carry those with you uh, day and night as you sleep, as you eat, as you, uh, you know, seven days a week, uh, at 365 days a year if the ma material has a long half-life. And it is radiating you inside constantly. So this is one of the differences, and uh, it's targeted on specific organs, specific parts of the body, and this is much more dangerous. The second thing is that instead of exposing a plane load of people, you're exposing millions of people, tens of millions of people, maybe hundreds of millions of people to this particular insult. And all the evidence, all the scientific knowledge about radiation effects shows that the individual exposure of a particular individual is not what is most important. The most important thing is the what's called the population exposure, the exposure of all those millions of people. You can predict from the population exposure how many extra cancers you will see. In a small population exposed to a certain degree of insult, you may see no cancers or few cancers. In a large population, you will see a significant number of cancers. And so uh, the real science here is being obscured. You know, people are not being told a clear picture of what the science has told us. Let me make a comparison with cigarettes. When people smoke cigarettes, uh, it used to be considered quite socially sophisticated yeah. and not particularly harmful. But the reason why is because nobody saw somebody smoke a cigarette and then fall over dead. And the same thing with radiation. Just because you get irradiated doesn't mean you fall over dead. What it means is that you are exposing yourself to a lifetime risk, which is going to be much worse if you carry that insult on chronically in your body for uh, decades possibly, rather than a brief exposure, which could also be harmful for millions and millions of people as a whole, but not nearly so harmful as a chronic, ongoing, unremitting exposure to internal radi radiation.